All right, guys. Uh, welcome to our video here on uh, predicting the pro predicting the products of composition and decomposition reactions. Uh, this is a little different than how we normally do things. Normally, you guys would see this during class. Uh, fill out the information in your packet, of course. Uh, do a couple examples, and then get assigned a bunch of practice problems for homework. Uh, we're going to switch things up a little bit, and instead of doing the practice problems for homework, you are going to watch this video or this uh, series of videos, I should say, uh, at home for homework, fill in the notes in your packet, um, do a couple example problems, and then when you guys come into class, um, after viewing these, you will um, do the practice problems instead of doing those at home. That's meant to help you out in case uh, you get stuck during the practice problems. You'll have your teacher to ask for help instead of uh, being at home doing the practice problems, getting stuck, and having no one to ask for help. So hopefully this will increase understanding and uh, be beneficial to you guys. So before we get started, you need to get a couple things together. First one is your Unit 3 packet turned to page 5, which is our composition reactions. Uh, second thing you need is your blue composition decomposition cheat sheet. You guys receive that during class. And the last thing you need is your periodic table. You're going to jot a few notes down on um, that. Uh, number four down here is optional, of course, uh, if you want that's the benefit of being at home doing this, I guess. Uh, you can relax and, and grab a snack if you want. Um, before we get started, I'm going to pause this so you guys can gather all these materials together. And once you have all this stuff together, and of course something to write with, you can resume the video. And we will start with our first example on the top of packet page 5. So let me pause this, and when you're ready, um, just resume the video. All right, I hope you guys got your uh, popcorn ready, as Terrell Owens would say. Uh, if you know who Terrell Owens is, uh, hopefully you laughed at that. Uh, if you don't know who Terrell Owens is, uh, just don't worry about it, I guess. So our first example here is uh, aluminum plus oxygen. So typically the first thing we would do would be to look at our blue cheat sheets to figure out what type of reaction this is. But this one's really easy, and we don't really need to do that. Uh, you just need to understand that we have a composition reaction here. And to refresh your memory about composition reactions, they are reactions where you take two uh, <coughs> simple substances, like aluminum and oxygen, and you combine them to form a one more complex substance. So common sense would tell us that if you take aluminum plus oxygen, put them together, you're going to form something called aluminum oxide. So first thing you need to do is write out that word formula. So Aluminum plus oxygen yields aluminum oxide. Okay? Uh, once that's finished, you guys simply need to write uh, the formulas underneath to finish this off and, of course, balance it. So, aluminum, you know the symbol for that is Al. Oxygen, you know the symbol of that is O, except uh, don't just leave it at that. Remember, oxygen is one of our seven diatomic elements. So instead of writing it as simply O, you have to write it as O2. Put your arrow, your yield sign, and you have to write the formula for aluminum oxide. So this is where uh, knowing your ions and how to write formulas comes in handy. Aluminum would have a charge of plus 3. Oxide is O with a charge of negative 2. So you put those together to form your compound, aluminum oxide, and you get Al2O3. Last step is to balance this. Uh, you can see it's clearly not balanced. Your aluminums and oxygens are both uh, incorrect or uh, unequal. So to balance this, uh, look at the left, you have two oxygens there, and on the right you have three. So what I typically say to do in this case is find a common multiple between two and three. Uh, at least common multiple is six. So in order to get six oxygens on the left, you need to put a coefficient of three in front of O2. And in order to get six oxygens on the right, you need to put a coefficient of two in front of Al2O3. Lastly, balance out the aluminums. You can see right here you have four on the right, 
you need 4 on the left as well. Put a coefficient of 4 in front of the AL, and you're good to go. Right. Equations now balance coefficients of 4, 3, and then 2. Okay, let's move on to our second example, and we're going to actually get to use our cheat sheet for this one. So you have calcium oxide plus water. Let's look at our cheat sheet and find out what type of composition reaction we have. So keep in mind what you're starting with. Go to your cheat sheet and look in the uh, composition reaction section. So our equation falls into one of these five categories. Let's see if we can figure out which one it is. Uh, it's clearly not going to be number one, right? Because number one is just a metal plus a nonmetal. Uh, we don't have that. Second one, metal plus oxygen, don't have that either. Third one, nonmetal plus oxygen, don't have that one. So we narrow it down to four and five here. Um, you have a metallic oxide in number four and a nonmetallic oxide in number five. By looking at what you have in your second example, you have calcium oxide. So calcium is your element before the oxide, and you have to know that calcium is a metal. So we are going to be using composition reaction number four, for example, a metallic oxide plus water. Look at the product. Look at the one product you form, since it's a composition reaction, and you form a metallic hydroxide. Okay, keep that in mind as you go back to packet page five, and you write the products in. Our product, again, is a metallic hydroxide. So what is the metal that we're going to use in our equation? Well, it's the metal that was in your metallic oxide, calcium. So our word equation is going to be calcium hydroxide. Okay, let's look at uh, how we write the formulas then. So we have to write our formula underneath, of course. So calcium oxide um, would be like this. Ca for calcium has a plus two charge. Oxide is O with a negative two charge. So it's simply CaO. You know the formula for water, that's H2O. And we are going to form calcium hydroxide. So again, calcium is Ca plus 2 hydroxide OH negative 1. Put those two together. Final answer of Ca parentheses OH close parentheses 2. Check it out. See if it's balanced. One calcium on each side two oxygens on the left, two oxygens on the right, two hydrogens on the left, two hydrogens on the right. It's balanced. So you guys are done. Okay. Simple as that. Third example, a little more difficult. You have sulfur plus oxygen. Okay. So again, uh, you always have to reference your cheat sheet to figure out what type of composition reaction you have. So let's take a look, and let's go through them. So you know it's not number one or two, because you have no metals involved in our example at all. Uh, for number three, nonmetal plus oxygen. Well, sulfur is a nonmetal, right? so that takes care of that. And oxygen, of course, is, is oxygen, so that fits in with, with this one. So we have composition reaction number three. Notice that composition reaction number three has a star next to it, five has a star next to it, and I want you to add a star next to decomp reaction number seven. And that one should have a tiny star next to it as well. That's a horrible star, but we'll, we'll pretend it's real nice like the other ones. Okay? Also, next to the ones that have a star, so again, three, five, and seven, um, this non-metallic oxide that you have in all of those, that is going to be a molecular or covalent molecule. So write that in. OK, 
Okay, I'm going to write it for one of them. You can write it for all three. It's up to you. As long as you remember that the starred ones are uh, dealing with a molecular or a covalent molecule, that non-metallic oxide. Okay, uh, let's head back to our problem and look what we have to do. So, when you have problems like this, any of them that we just starred, you run into problems because you don't know how many sulfurs or oxygens you have in your final product. So we're going to use our periodic table to try to figure out uh, how many of those we have. So when you write the formula, or when you name your final product here for um, your composition reaction, you know you have an oxide because it says your product is a non-metallic oxide. Oxide is always O with a negative 2 charge. That always takes priority over your other nonmetal that you have. So the other one, of course, is sulfur S. Now typically sulfur, when it creates an ion, would have a negative 2 charge. Um, that can't happen here because you can't have a negative 2 charge combined with another negative 2 charge. Opposites repel. That won't happen. So only for the start problems that you guys have, for those start equations, you have to use your periodic table to assign a positive charge, or something we call a positive oxidation state, for this nonmetal, in this case, sulfur. So let's go to our periodic table. And you guys can write these in if you want. Um, our positive oxidation states are going to correspond to the different columns on our periodic table. So you want to find sulfur, and it is over here in the sixth column, right underneath oxygen. Um, everything in your first column, okay, hydrogen on down, is going to have a positive oxidation state of plus 1. Everything in your second column is going to have a positive oxidation state of plus 2. It's not labeled, but your third column would be plus 3, so I'll label it there. Fourth column plus 4, etc. Over here, all the way up to 7. So, find sulfur right here. It's in that sixth column, so we are going to say sulfur would have, uh, in the case of the starred problems only, again, sulfur will have a charge of a plus six, plus six oxidation state. So head back to your slide on page five and give sulfur that positive six charge. Remember, you only do this for a non-metallic oxide. That's it. Um, how would you write the formula for this? Very simple. SO3. If you had three oxides, that would give you a charge of negative six, which would cancel out the charge of plus six on sulfur. So the rest of this is easy, because you just want to write uh, your reactants down. Sulfur is S. Oxygen, remember, is diatomic, is O2. Finally, to balance this, it's very similar to the first problem we did. Put a 2 in front of SO3, a 3 in front of O2, and a 2 in front of S. So your final answer is 2S plus 3O2 yields 2SO3. Okay? Uh, that is it for our first three examples here for composition reactions. Um, I have less than a minute left for YouTube, like, um, gives me a hard time here for uploading a video that's too long. So on our second video, I'll do just one more example, and you guys will also be able to try a couple on your own, um, and then you'll be able to pause it while you work on those, and I'll post the answers, and you guys will be able to check what you got, uh, see if you did them correctly, and I'll also explain them for you um, as well. So this is the first video. Um, this one's going to be over now in a few seconds you'll want to then watch the second video, which is just a continuation of composition reactions. Okay, so I'll talk to you guys again on that second video.